based on where you are at in the world you would have to understand like what size paper you have might be labeled as a4 but it's not actually a4 if the actual lines on here are important to you hi guys in this video i'll be responding to a comment that i got recently on one of my color videos where someone was saying that they wish that they had more information on how to read the different cutting lines on this machine. Now I did check with the company's website just to see if they had anything on there already. And since I wasn't able to find anything, I just decided to share in this video the little bit that I understand so far and hopefully it will be helpful to someone else. Alright, so at the top of the machine you have your main ruler. You also have the same ruler mirrored in the middle of the machine. The bottom part of the ruler is measured using inches starting from where the blade comes into contact with the cutting stick and it runs all the way to just past 17 and a half inches. At the top is measured using centimeters starting from where the blade comes into contact with that cutting stick and it is at almost 45 centimeters, right? If I wanted to double check just to see if that is accurate, I can use this metal ruler. Now, I will be using it in this direction because I need to line things up and I don't want to cover up my ruler. So, my ruler that's on the machine. So, I want this 15 to line up with the line on my cutting stick and this 14 to line up with one inch. Now, to account for Parallax error or the fact that I am standing off to the side, I am going to line it up as best as possible from here and then I'm actually going to line up my inch lines that are more directly in front of me to try to increase an accu um, the accuracy of my measurement. All right? So I'm going to keep this ruler as straight as possible, line up this 12, 11, and 10 that's right in front of me. Then I'm going to engage my knife and it should cut directly into that 15 line which it is all right i'm going to do the same thing to check the centimeter measurement lines from the where the blade is coming at, into contact with the cutting stick line up the centimeter lines that are more directly in front of me and it should cut right on that 38 centimeter line there is a one millimeter line right after that 38 line on this ruler but i wanted to cut right where that 38 is which it is okay so on top we have one centimeter apart at the bottom we have our inch lines now all of these these um vertical lines the lighter colored lines they are all one centimeter apart in this direction and also in this direction so we just I'm just going to double check that so if I lined up my ruler on this centimeter line here and I line it up on this centimeter line lower down here just to see if they line up. It should be in line with that line, this long line that's on the main part of the machine. Hopefully that makes sense. So that is lining up nicely on that side and also on this side. Okay. And to check, I can use my centimeter measurements on here and just check to see if I am getting... If I were to check the measurements on this side, if they are one centimeter apart and they are also one centimeter apart, all right? Now, because they have this main ruler only um, horizontally and they don't have one of these rulers vertically, if for any reason you needed to measure along this edge, you know, you would have to use the centimeter measurements. Now, these here, these are just presets for commonly I'm like common size sizes of notebooks and sketch pads. These two are sketch pads, right? And these are different sizes of notebooks. So for this part of the video, I had to do a little bit of research just to get clear information on the different sizes that it has, you know, laid out here on the machine. Now I will start with using some samples. These are some sheets of paper that I have from when I was back in Trinidad. Some certificates and if it I was if I was to take this and lay this out these two sheets lay them out on this machine jam it all the way back right to where the cut line is it is going to give me an exact A4 um, cut right however if I was to take this piece of cardstock that I ordered here 
in America and this is eight and a half by eleven but it is also labeled as A4. If I jam this up against the back of the machine and try to line it up, it's actually passing the cut line and it is shorter than that A4. Similarly, I have this this um old planner, same thing, it is labeled eight and a half by eleven, but also A4. If I jam it up against the back of the machine, it's passing the cut line and it is shorter. Now, apparently that there are different paper sizes, like standard cutting sizes based on where you're at in the world. So this machine, the layout that they have, you know, as preset, you know, if you wanted to make cutouts like um, easy where you don't have to measure all the time and you can get repeatable cuts. This is based on what's called international standards in America, Canada and Mexico. Not sure if those are the only three countries. They use something called ANSI. Um, that's American National Standards Institute and you have other different types of cutting sizes like architectural sizes and a lot more information than I have, right? So that's what these preset sizes are actually based on. They're based on the international standards. But if it is based on where you are at in the world, you would have to understand like what size paper you have might be labeled as A4, but it's not actually A4. If the actual lines on here are important to you. So as I said, the closest thing to A4, if you were or if you, if I was ordering from America, would actually be eight and a half by eleven, which is not actually A4 as laid out here. So you know, um, if you'd Google like common notebook sizes or sketch pad sizes, you know, you should be able to find charts that kind of lay out the different standards, like side by side where you can see like what size in what region might be closest to another size in another region but as i said that's a lot more information than you know that i have so for me i use eight and a half by eleven so something that i can do if i wanted to was to jam this up here find my eight and a half eleven point and then take something like maybe washi tape and lay piece you know, like all the way down to my eight and a half, half eleven measurement and then across. That way I can reproduce the same result where I can get repeatable cuts by just laying my stock down and just cutting and be sure that it will give me an eight and a half by eleven. Of course, probably using something weighted to hold it down so that it doesn't to kind of reduce the shifting. But anyway, hopefully that helps. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. If I can help, I will try to. Um, thank you so much for watching the video and I will talk to you in another one. Bye.